In this video, I'm going to show you ambiguous outer joints. This video is inspired by a post by Roger Carlson at the URL shown here. Let's take a look. Outer joints are very powerful inside of Access, and when you typically just have two tables, there's usually not a problem. However, two or more tables, and you begin to have potential issues. Uh, oftentimes, Access will allow, other times it won't, and it gives you a very non-descriptive, ambiguous outer join error. And this presentation will explore some of the causes and some potential solutions. So how do you know when an outer join will result in an error? Well, many ways to tell. One of the easiest ways is to visually look at what's happening in the Query Builder grid. In front of me, I have three tables, Client, Purchase Order, and Purchase Order Details. I'm going to demonstrate some illegal outer joins, then a legal outer join, and a potential solution if I truly did need the logic that Access just won't let me have uh, when it Access sees it as illegal, but I do need it to happen. How can we accomplish that? I've started off with a query, and of course, my tables have been invited in. Let's take a look at the illegal outer join queries and learn what not to do. When I have a relationship, say from the client ID to client ID, of course, it starts off as an inner join. That's the default. If we double click, however, to change the join properties, I can say, for example, include all from client and only those from the purchase order where they happen to be equal. We'll go ahead and say OK. Notice the arrow points to the right. So one client has many purchase orders. We'll go ahead now and connect the purchase order ID. And we'll go in and change its join type. So if I decided, for example, to say, show me all the details and only if they happen to have a purchase order, we'll click OK. This is an example of an illegal join. One of the reasons this is considered illegal is because a table which participates in an outer join as a secondary table, so in other words, the arrow is pointing towards it, cannot participate in either an inner join or as a secondary table in another outer join. So the results will be an ambiguous outer join error. How do we fix it? We simply go in and choose the proper. Choose all from purchase order and if there happens to be purchase order detail equal, great. Invite it along as well. I simply click OK, and this would be an appropriate, legal, proper outer join query. But back to our scenario where I truly did need one of the illogical layouts. Um, how do we handle that? Well, let's go ahead and first of all, I'm going to remove this join. I'm going to remove the table. Simply a right mouse click to remove the table. And this will be query one. We'll go ahead and save it. I'll just call it query one for now. Now that I've saved the query, I need to add some content. So we'll go ahead and we want to know who. Uh, we'll go, just go ahead and say their last name and the order date. I also need to know the client ID and purchase order ID as well. We may need those for connections to later items. We'll go ahead and save and close. Next, we'll create yet another query. I will invite query one in as well as the third table. Now I may connect the dots. I'm going to go in and make sure that we have connected. And there we go. So this would be considered legal. 
all Access really ever needed was the understanding of what it should do first. And in this case, we split out the query and did a stacked query. The first ties together tables one and two in a very specific relationship. The results of that then are sent down to combine with table three in that specific relationship. So this will give us the results that we're interested in without the error. Thanks again to Roger for inspiring this video. Please check out his blog at the URL shown here for other great articles related to access.